Hello there and welcome to the series of videos looking to go through the content of A-level maths. Uh, here we're on inequality regions, exercise 3G. So hopefully this is familiar to you from GCSE. Um, so what we're reminding ourselves with is that when we're shading a region, in this case here we've shaded this yellow part of the region here, this is when the Y coordinates are bigger than the F of X line. So We've, the dotted line here is representing y equals f of x, and the region that's shaded in yellow is where the y coordinate is bigger than the function f of x or that line. The unshaded part down here is when the y coordinate is less than the values that are on this line here. We've drawn a dotted line in this case. That means that anywhere that's on this line is not counted inside this region. If it was a solid line, then it would mean that it is included in the region and it would need a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to symbol on its inequality. So that's a basic reminder of how we're going to draw these graphs. Let's get straight into it and draw some of these um, equations or draw some of these regions here. So the first thing we did, just a reminder, is that we first need to draw the actual equations of the lines when there is an equals to symbol there. And remember, when we draw these lines, we need to draw them either in a dotted fashion or in a straight line, solid line fashion based on the inequality they've given us. If it's got an equal to symbol on it, solid. If it's just a straight inequality like the second one here, it's a dotted line. So let's go through these then. So the first equation we need to draw is y equals minus 2. All of the coordinates along this line have a coordinate of minus 2. For example, this one back here might be minus 7 minus 2. This one up here might be 6 minus 2. All of these coordinates have a y value of minus 2. x is less than 5, but first we draw x equals 5, and that's going to be a vertical line like this at 5. And it needs to be dotted in this case because its x is only less than 5. So when we finish our region, anywhere along this line is going to be counted inside the region, but anywhere that's straight along this line here is not going to be counted inside the region. The next one here is a bit more tricky. y equals 3x plus 2. Now the way I'd approach this is by doing y equals mx plus c. So start at 2 and go up at a gradient of 3 and backwards by 3 um, as well. So we get y equals 3x plus 2 like this. And for x is greater than 0, we draw the line x equals 0, which is effectively the y-axis. Now we focus on which parts of the diagram we're looking for to shade in here. We need the y-coordinates to be more than minus 2. So on this red line here, we want our y-coordinates to be bigger than minus 2. So anywhere in this region at the moment is satisfying. We want the x-coordinates to be less than 5, so we want the left-hand side portion of this graph here. We want the y-coordinates to be less than 3x plus 2. Well, if this is the line where y is equal to 3x plus 2, we want the parts of the graph where we have y-coordinates less than this line. So that needs a downward arrow here. And when x is bigger than 0, we want the x values to be bigger than 0, so it needs to be the right-hand side of this purple line. Find all the intersections of these uh, arrows here, and we get this shaded region inside here. Okay, so that was a bit of an easy one. Let's go on to a bit more of a tricky one. We've got a linear one and a quadratic one this time. So as with before, start by drawing the equations of the lines when there's an equal to symbol and then we'll think about whether we want the top half of it or the bottom half of it. So with y e, 2y plus x is uh, equal to 14, remember the way that we should approach, a, approach drawing this sort of graph is to suppose that either of the coordinates is equal to 0. So let's start with the left hand one here, 2y uh, so y is going to be equal to 0, so ignore this 2y bit for now. Uh, therefore, x is going to equal 14. So that's one coordinate that we have on our graph, 14 and 0. 
And the second half here, we're going to have x equals 0. So 2y is going to equal 14. So y is going to equal 7. So we're going to have another coordinate here, 0, 7. Plot those on your graph and join them up, and that will give you the equation of this line here. So it's going to look like this. 14 is going to be way over here. 7 is up here. And it needs to be a dotted line because it's just less than 14. And to draw this graph here, so y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. Remember the way that we do this is we factorise this. x minus 4, x plus 1. So we're going to get uh, roots of this quadratic here being 4 and minus 1. And then it's going to be a happy uh, quadratic graph going through the points here and here and at minus 4 down here. So let's draw that in. And in this case, it needs to be a solid line. Let's uh, pop an equality onto that one there. Um, so it's going to be equal to because we've drawn a solid line here. Right, so in this case, we want the y-coordinate to be bigger than this line. So we need an arrow here. And we want the um, value of 2y plus x to be less than 14. So that needs to have a downward arrow going this way. So in this case here, we're going to have this shaded yellow area here that's representing our region. OK, so your turn now. Pause the video and have a go at these questions. OK, well done for pausing the video and having a go at these questions. Let's have a go at the first one. So if I was doing this in an exam, I'd definitely be using a ruler and making sure that I've got all of my intervals correct. But here I'm just demonstrating how to do this question for you. So the first question we're doing here, we need to draw y equals x minus 2. So a bit of y equals mx plus c here. I'm going to have an intersection at minus 2 and a gradient of 1. And it's going to be a dotted line because it is uh, strictly greater than. So the first part of my graph is here. I'm going to have an intersection here of 2 as well. The next one here, I'm going to have the equation y equals 4x. So that's going to go through the 0 point and have a much steeper gradient than the uh, x graph. It's going to be a dotted line as well because we um, it's a strictly less than symbol. So we're going to have this line here. And for the last one, we're going to have another y equals mx plus c1. It's going to be y equals 5 minus x. So in this case, we're going to start up at 5, and we're going to decrease our gradient by 1 each time. And it's going to be a solid line because it's equal to um, on the inequality. So this line here is going to look roughly like this. OK, let's now consider whether we're above the line or below the line in each of these cases. So in the first case, we want to be above the line because the y-coordinate is greater than x minus 2. In the second case here, the y-coordinate is less than 4x. So we want to be this part of the line here. And in this equation here, we want to be, uh, for the green one, less than the equations or the coordinates on this line here. So for this line here, we're going to be below it. So shading in the region here is going to be this region here. OK. Right, moving on to question six now, where we have to construct the inequalities ourselves. We've been given the equations of the lines, and we just need to verify whether it's going to be greater than, less than, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. In this case, they're all solid lines, so they're all going to be have a greater than or equal to part to them. Um, so in the first case here, let's sort, sort out the black one first. We want the y-coordinate to be bigger than the x plus 1 line. So here the first one's going to be y is greater than or equal to x plus 1. In the red line here, we want the y-coordinate to be less than the equations on this line. So it's going to be y is less than or equal to 7 minus x. And for the blue equation here, we want the x-coordinates to be bigger than 1. So we're going to have x is bigger than or equal to 1. 
Okay, so that's answered those questions there. Have a go now at lots of questions from exercise 3G. Remember, answering this or watching this video is only 10% of the um, 10 percent of the journey towards learning this topic uh, 90 percent of this journey is going to be answering some questions persisting on those that you find difficult and asking your teacher for help when you get stuck thanks for watching